Strike Foxy. I think Charles Kane is a play tonight. Hey, 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 time for another edition of Open Court here on NBA TV. We're taking a look at the 2013-14 uh, NBA season in this installment and also a little look back at, uh, at last season. And here is the, uh, the panel we have assembled. Uh, we'll be starting with uh, uh, Rick Fox, three-time NBA champion. It's actually known as Pretty Ricky. Uh, <laughs> only guy on the crew, I have, actually the only guy on the crew who looks wow. worse after makeup uh, than he does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next to uh, next to him is uh, that's good. Is a guy who, who uses uh, a lot of makeup. Uh, Al McWilkins, <laughs> the human highlight film, uh, NBA uh, Hall of Famer, class of. Let me make sure. 2006, same as same as Charles. Good to have you with us, Nick. Uh, Steve Kerr. Five championship rings. You know how many guys have more championship rings than Steve Kerr in Thirteen. history? Thirteen. Thirteen. You're right. I heard it, Kenny. I heard it the other day. I, I dropped that <laughs> nugget on him earlier. Did. Uh, <laughs> what? You know, people always tell me, Ernest is such a smart guy. I said, first of all, he's not a smart guy. People be telling him what to say in his ear. Don't make this about me. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Charles Barkley is here. Uh, he went in the same year as Dominique did, and uh, obviously wonderful to see. Uh, what do you What do you want in there? You look good. Early, I'm no, not, you, no, you look good. No, I know I feel good. But listen, I'm, hey, listen, you I'm had, not you had off-season surgery on your I, shoulder. I'm getting your better, Ernie. I did. I was lifting weights like an idiot. Yes, Staying in the side of the weight room when they keep the light weights. It, it, was, like, it was like Ron Burgundy. It was like, 1,000 and two. <laughs> oh, it burns. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> it's good to have you with us. Um, <laughs> Kenny, do uh, you know what I'm going to say about you? No, I do not know. No, it's, uh, you know, Kenny's the two-time champion, 16-year at Turner Sports. You know how many people have more championship rings than I do? A lot. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Steve Smith is next to him, um, NBA champion with the Spurs in 2003. In fact, he was Steve Kerr's teammate uh, on that team in 2003. Once made seven threes and a quarter. And here's a, here's a good nugget for you. Made the first three-pointer in Bobcat Bob history. history. <laughs> wow. You did. Maybe you should come out of retirement. You can make that team. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and still looking for a three. <laughs> they can use you right now. Rounding out the panel is Tracy McGrady, seven-time All-Star, two-time NBA scoring champion, uh, and made that jump wow. right out of high school in 1997 into the NBA. How about that? Tracy, good to see you again, man. Have you officially announced your retirement? Yes, yes. Offi didn't sign the paper. But, uh, officially, officially announced it. If from, you the got a call, from the NBA. It's yeah, over, man. What you get a call today? Jeff? It's over. I will never go back. But you signed the but, papers, though. You, yeah. you got to sign the papers. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, but you don't. The, don't sign the papers. Once you're gone for a year, you, it's automatic. Yeah. Really? <laughs> it's, it's my Van Horn didn't sign the papers. Remember, he got that. that Who? Keith so, Van Horn. Yeah. You got, but yeah, I mean, got like a sign you, you, and trade. You got that sign and trade. For, don't sign the papers. Hey, listen. I won't go back. Tracy, <laughs> he been saying you've been retired for about three years. Oh, when did oh. I say that? Why oh. would you start the show when like that? When did I say I'm that? I'm just keeping it. Hey, I, I hey. have no secrets in my house. When did I say that? Last year, the year before last. Say, what, Tracy? Are you retired? Tell me that now, Charles. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> uh, tell him right to me right now. I, 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 <laughs> believe it or not, believe, believe it or not, I actually thought you could have an impact doing the finals, to be honest with you. I too. Yeah, I did. I thought you could have had an impact. Cause I think you, because of your body type, I thought I said I think he probably body type. Explain that. Uh, to, to guard LeBron James, you would have to have a special type of body because he's so big and so fast. I thought Tracy could have had an impact trying to guard him. I don't think anybody can guard LeBron. Well, no, we. But, but LeBron is a tough. I mean, like I say. If, if, there's very few guys who are big enough physically, mm -hmm. who are quick enough athletic-wise to have a chance of guarding LeBron. And I thought Tracy McGrady should have got a chance to the finals. You, did you think he should have been retired last year? I was. Actually, he was a pop yeah. ball before. I'll let it go, man. I'm going to let it go. <laughs> See, right? We have no secrets. Right? I, I appreciate the fact that you're going to oh, let, that one, boy. let that one go. Never. Okay, we're, we're looking ahead to the, to the upcoming season, but I want to start with last year. Tracy, you're a good place to start uh, because you're on that San Antonio team. How devastating a loss was game six, and, and what kind of a summer was it for anybody wearing the silver and black to, to get over being that close to the title and not, and not grabbing it? Well, for me... 
being a part of that that team that went so deep and had a, a chance to win a title, I've never been that deep in the playoffs. So, 28 seconds, up five, I was tasting the champagne. Mm. Mm. I was tasting it. I was trying to decide how will I celebrate. Wow. Up well, five. I mean, the chances of us, that us losing that game was was what probably about 15 percent. You know. I say less. Yeah, you know, or, or, or less. probably less. Yeah. And if, and if you and think it, about the Spurs history, what you guys, the the smart mental right makeup of the team. Yes. No way that team blows that lead with oh. that time left. Right. Two rebounds, two offensive rebounds, and a couple of missed free throws. Mm -hmm. That's a lot in 28 seconds. Stevie and I, we were having breakfast this morning, and we were talking about all the, everything that fell into place that had to fall into place for that game to go the other way. We were counting. We, we counted seven different things that had to happen for Miami to win. You mentioned the two offensive rebounds, two missed free throws, two made threes. I mean, Miami obviously had to, mm -hmm. to come up big. And then Parker had a chance at the end. Uh, but I think that what sticks out, yeah, I don't I don't ever look at missed free throws and say, man, they should have, because people miss free throws, and particularly right. under pressure. It's the offensive rebounds that I think the Spurs, and, and yeah. you were there, Tracy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but those two offensive rebounds are kind of the ones that you look at and you go, man, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, those and, were the killers. And, and you don't want to question Pop. I mean, he's a four-time champion, and you know, to have Timmy out of the game at that time was devastating. Because yeah. we, we know uh, he probably would have received one of those rebounds. What was that locker room like after game six? Silence. It was uh, absolutely just silence. I mean, because we, we were stunned. Hmm. I thought it was amazing that you guys came back in game seven and had a chance. I agree end. with that. What, I, what, I, what, I was, it was so funny you said that, Steve. I was just getting ready to say that. Because I, you know, obviously everybody wanted our opinions out the game. I said, if these Spurs could actually win game seven, Greg Popovich is a miracle worker. Because I've been in the NBA 30 years. I've never seen a loss that devastating mm -hmm. before. Or a team like, I mean, I'm sitting there saying, oh, man, the Spurs going to win the championship. And then you're like, because when LeBron shoots the three and he misses, you're like, uh-oh, this game is over. And they get the rebound, and then he hits the three. You're like, oh, the Spurs still going to win this game. And with Duncan out, attack the rim. James catches, puts up a three. Won't go. Rebound, Bosh. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Tie game! That, that was, that, well, that you was know what was, uh, what was, I think, helpful for the guys in game seven is... Um, you know, it's in their DNA that even though it was a devastating loss in game six, after game six, everybody was down, just wiped out, completely just wanted to go back to the hotel. And um, Pop directed us to a restaurant, everybody. And we went in there as a team, our families and everybody, and we were sitting there talking amongst each other about the game and, you know, kind of got it out of our system. And those guys came out and competed in game seven. I mean, obviously it wasn't. So it never gave you guys a chance to be in the room and looking in the mirror right. and get and feeling down. Yeah, yeah. So, talked it out, yeah. the therapy of talking it out. So so Miami wins the title. Let's turn the page. And um, what stands between Miami, Rick, uh, and another title this year? Recovery. Recovery from a shortened summer. Uh, we did three stretches to the NBA Finals. The fourth year, we broke down. Fatigue sets in. You know, you, when you go into June repeatedly, if you're fortunate enough, in the case of the Heat, they lost that first one to the Mavericks. They've won the last two. So this would, be, this would be their fourth year in an attempt into June. I thought they broke down in a number of areas physically already last year. So for them to return, I thought they needed to add some pieces in key, in key places to shore up some of that, uh, some of that miles that's on some of those guys' uh, bodies. And I don't know if I saw that. Odin's and, Odin's, uh, and Beasley are additions, but I don't think they're the, the additions that are going to make the, the difference uh, in terms of an 82-game season and a run into June again. So the odds are probably against them, but, but I want to see it. I want to see someone do it. If not them, who in the East? I, I like Chicago. I was a, a huge fan of uh, Chicago, even without Derrick Rose. Um, I, so his return, I think, will solidify 
their their presence again. I mean, if you think back before he got injured, they had the best record in the East. I like Indiana. I think Indiana has a chance with Paul George being a lot better. The new T-Mac. You know, Paul George being a, a lot better, having Granger back healthy, and with the depth they have, I think Indiana challenged him. Yeah, let's, Scola, let's keep, keep it in. Scola, yeah, Scola, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would say um, Indiana, too. You know, they got Scola now. That team has gotten better this year. Uh, if Miami doesn't have any consistency in the middle, they're going to still have a rough time trying to guard those big other bigs like Hibbert and, and those type of guys because he gave them all types of problems in the, in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. The problem I have with Indiana, if they, I love Danny Granger, I love Paul George. How do they play together? Yeah. Right. So I, I think that's going to be a challenge for Frank Vogel because mm -hmm. I, I, I think you keep Paul George at the three. I think he's a better three than playing a two. And as we all know, Granger was the guy. You know, is, is, he, is he willing to give up the range of saying the wing guy is Paul George? Granger's still young, and I, and I think point guard play, I like point guard play for the Indiana Pacers, but I'm not in love with it. So I would give the edge to Chicago a little bit over Indiana. Listen, if Greg Oden can play and Michael Beasley, are they going to be tough to beat? Because the only weakness of that team is size. Mm -hmm. And if those two guys can give them... They, just being out there going to make them a bigger team. Think D-Wade stay healthy the whole season? He, I don't think he's going to stay healthy. I think because he's on the downside of his career. But they can survive because LeBron, but they still play. You saw anytime they play against big guys, they struggle. Yeah. They look small. Thing, I think this would be the first year that they'll have three series if, to get to the NBA Finals. Because, you know, those all those teams that you guys mentioned, I think, are the better teams. But then you have a team that could be great, and you don't know, and they'll be young, is Cleveland. And you might have to see them in the first round. And that would be a tough series. And then all of a sudden, another tough series. I, I don't think they've had, ever had three tough series in a row. The East is so much deeper now. You know, add New York into that. So it's, it, there's, that will be the difference, breaking down mental fatigue, mm -hmm. physical fatigue, going to the finals four years. And like I said, teams like Cleveland who, on paper, arguably is just as talented as any team in the league. Steve? Uh, Miami's the best team, but I agree with Rick. I think it's so difficult to do this year after year. I mean, you guys have both been part of that three-peat thing. I mean, where do you... Is motivation a question? Do you get it's, it's satisfied? It's motivation. It's, it's fatigue. It's yeah. just emotional and physical fatigue. I mean, it, and you look at Miami last year, there were times where they looked like they were in some serious trouble. Then you think about Wade's age and, and injuries. Chris Bosh looked tired at the end of last year. And Miami in particular, they've, they've played under more scrutiny than probably any team in the history of the NBA. Just the daily grind of the media and the fans and everything. You throw all that in there, I, I just don't think they're gonna get out of the East this year. When you go deep into the playoffs, I don't think most people understand. It's another two months. <laughs> and not just a regular yeah, two months. Yeah, it's, like it, every yeah, game counts it, yeah, two months. Like, like I tell people, I says, man, like if I was on teams, we lost in the first round. We lost in the second round. I lost in the conference <laughs> finals. But when you make it to the finals, and then you do it year after year, it's such a grind. Well, Steve, Kenny, and Rick, yeah, you're, I would love to know because y'all been there deep. But do you think the Heat are deep enough in the way coaches now arresting players? You know, back in y'all era, you know, you guys started from day one. Mm -hmm. But do you think Spolstra have a chance to sit D Wade, sit LeBron and Chris Bosh and the other players deep enough to hold on throughout the regular season? The one thing that. I We'll see if, if he has his patience, the, the, what I, the, the Floyd Mayweather patience, not to, not to go for home runs in the regular season in round one and round two or round three and just kind of just, no, nah, I'm just going to keep jabbing you and, and get out because it is addicting to say we could still win this game. But is it good, well, are we going to win for the season like Popovich is able mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. and say, I'll give up some games. Yeah, Miami trying to do, to, to Rick's point, Miami trying to do something that hasn't been done since 82 to 85 by the Lakers, and that is make it to the finals in four consecutive years. When we come back, uh, who's going to win the West and uh, the comebacks? Uh, Derrick Rose, uh, Russell Westbrook, Kobe Bryant. We'll be back. But the Lakers are not a good team. They're not, you, you can't, 
and lose a Dwight Howard, a Ron Artest, and think your team is going to be better with an older Asian Achilles, Kobe Bryant. critical playoff injuries too last year and the Derrick Rose the year before um, and now we wait and see how these guys return uh, one thing that went on and on and on last year was hey Derrick Rose is just about to come back hey it's gonna be three weeks he's gonna come back hey wait and now playoffs gonna start he's come and he never did um, what do we expect to see this year out of Derrick Rose Nick well if he comes back the good thing about him, he's young so hopefully he he's a guy who works hard. Hopefully he'll come back ready to play. And if he's healthy, he's I mean, he's always been one of my favorite players because of the way he plays the game. But the type of injury that he had to that need to be out as long as he he's been out. It's gonna take some time for him to get in basketball shape, get that basketball rhythm back. But um, I like to see him back and I think he's gonna be fine when he comes. He was like you said, he was ready to come back this year. They just decided to hold him out a little longer. Tracy, there was so much talk and so many people weighing in on what's he waiting for? Hey, look, Amon Shumpert hurt his the same time. He's been back. What's he, you know, is he afraid of something? Is he not confident? He's saying when he's comfortable, he'll be back. How did you respond to all the talk that was going on surrounding him? Every, every player deals with those type of injuries different. Um, mentally, it's a hurdle that you have, the mental block you have to get over. I know when I hurt my knee and was and come, trying to come back and do some of those same moves, mentally I couldn't do it. I was afraid to do it. I wouldn't even try it. It took me a while to actually get back to feeling comfortable doing some of the things that you know I was naturally doing on the basketball court. And the move where he hurt his knee is like one of his patent moves where he goes to. So for me, it's, it's going to be interesting to see him, how he reacts when he first comes back and do that move. But from what I'm hearing, because we're both the Diaz guys, that he looks damn good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Tracy actually asked you asked me the yeah. question yeah. when I, he came back. You know, how did it feel coming back after my injury? And I said, the the thing you have to do is get it out of your head. If you feel good, don't think about getting hurt. I said because I went through that same thing. But once I got it out of my head, I was fine. Uh, when we look in the West and you see Russell Westbrook and Kobe Bryant uh, both trying to come back, how they do that will obviously impact what you think of Oklahoma City and their chances mm -hmm. of going back to the to the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. Exactly what the Lakers will be, who knows um, well, if and when Kobe comes back there. With or without Kobe Bryant, the Lakers gonna stink. <laughs> uh, stink or just be <laughs> decent? I thought it was gonna be worse than stink. <laughs> they stink. Uh, worse well, than... Was stink. <laughs> okay. Stink is... What's, they stink uh, are, they stink. They, are they a C? Are they a C? The Lakers will <laughs> not make the playoffs. <laughs> They're a lottery team. <laughs> they are, the Lakers are a lottery team. Listen, listen. With or I, I, without I, Listen, I love Kobe Bryant. Okay. He's one of the 10 greatest NBA players ever. But the Lakers are not a good team. They're not, and you can't lose a Dwight Howard, a Ron Artest, and think your team is going to be better with an older Asian Achilles, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> I, I think they do not make the playoffs. Now, Russell Westbrook is a little bit different. Uh, they are one of the top one or two teams in the West if he comes back healthy. Uh, with Kevin Durant and a healthy Russell Westbrook, they're one of the top two or three teams the in thing, the West. The funny thing, Chuck, with Westbrook, if he slowed down because of the injury, he's probably yeah. a better player. Yeah. You <laughs> might be right. <laughs> you he, might be right. He'd probably see a game a little bit differently. More in control. More in control, but it, and, and would take a little bit less chances. Who wins the West? Steve? Uh, I got Oklahoma City. Um, you know, I hate to write the Spurs off. Uh, I've, I kind of thought they were done four years ago, and they keep coming back, and last year probably should have won it all. So I, I think they have a great chance. I, I, I really like what the Clippers have done. Is, but Kevin Durant's just special. And, and that team last year had the best record in the West. Their defense is really solid. Offensively is where they need to make the most improvement. I'm going with the Houston Rockets. Wow. I, I think best? that. Wow. This, well, I mean, that's, I, I, I mean, I, I, looking at, I mean, everybody I, 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 be talking about the D. Howard stories. So. I think that you know, he's going. He's healthy. 
You know, Dwight Howard was not healthy last year. Uh, regardless of what we, cause you could see that he physically wasn't healthy. Uh, sure. Having him and w what James Harden is able to do, what Chandler Parsons is able to do, uh, and, and a steady Beverly and Lynn. Those guys are steady enough to make it happen. That is a team that I would not want to, I think that they will they have a chance to come out the West. The best player I ever played against was Kevin McHale. I think Dwight Howard, and we talked about it, he's probably 60% of the player that he could be. And I think getting a chance to work with Kevin McHale every day is going to be the best thing ever happened to him. I don't think he's, you know, when, when, when Dwight had his best years, he worked with Patrick Ewing down in Orlando. And Kevin McHale is a different type of player than Patrick Ewing. I think if he's able to work on Dwight's skills over this summer and throughout the season, I think Dwight Howard can get back to being the best big man in the game. Uh, if he were to develop some type of offensive skills to go with his rebound and defense, he could he could just go crazy. I'm going to go with a younger team, uh, Golden State Warriors, even though they've lost two key additions, you know, Jack and Landry leaving, uh, which was a support off the bench for them. But I like the Iguodala addition. I think with the style of playing the league right now, you see Miami plays. Uh, six seven six eight across the board uh, size there, there aren't enough dominating big men to, to, to control uh, the league anymore if you ask me uh, and so that style of play has taken over and I, I like uh, the experience they got through the playoffs they lost to San Antonio how far do you like them um, I like them up against the Clippers in a in, or the OKC in the Western Conference Finals but I just think that if they can impose their pace and their will uh, and play you know, those guys together. To me, David Lee comes gotta, back, Bo gets healthy at 100%, so he says no one gets out of the league 100%. I, I, I like him upset. You got, I, you got I, an eye roll from T-Mac on that. Right? Well, he's he's re more recently in the league, so. No, I, I mean, I just don't think Golden State is as good as they were last year. I think l losing Landry and, and Jerry Jack is just a, a devastating loss for, for Golden State. But... Uh, my pick would be the Clippers. Mm -hmm. I played with Doc Rivers for three and a half years, and, and I know the adjustments, in-game adjustments he can make, uh, the, the, the the motivation that he could get from um, his speeches that he gives, pre-game speech, uh, the position he puts his players in to be successful. Uh, he does that, and I think he'll have Blake and DeAndre Jordan in great positions to be successful and have a better season to help them be better than they were last year. I'm picking the Clippers. Um... I was leaning toward OKC, Steve. The only reason why I think the loss of Kevin Martin mm -hmm. is going to hurt them a little bit coming off the bench, and unless they can add somebody else that can help coming off the bench. And, and I'm with Tracy on Doc. I think their bench, J.J. Redick and everything, and I think Matt Barnes was a key bringing back. They have more role players that want to do the dirty work. Jared Dudley, too. Yeah. Jared Dudley. But it's still going to come down uh, to Blake. It's still going to come down to Blake, but I, I think looking at the West, I think the Spurs, I don't think they're there. I think they're third seed. I think Houston's around fourth seed. And I'm going to go with the Clippers edging out OKC coming out of the West. No, I would say, I would tend to agree with you as well. I, I had to lean a little bit more towards OKC. But again, like you said, losing Martin and the key pieces, they really don't have that energy coming off the bench. I'm going to go with Doc because I know what kind of doc, uh, player he was. I know what kind of coach he is. So again, the adjustments he makes in games is pretty impressive. And he'll make them guys play better defense, which they're athletic team but they weren't the, one of the best defensive teams. So Doc will bring another element to the game. And you're right, Charles. If, if Blake Griffin can find some other offensive moves to create a double team, that team going to be very dangerous. And same thing with DeAndre Jordan. It's amazing to me the two guys that so athletic never had that type of teaching. And if they don't, I think if they just want to concentrate on rebound and block shots. I think if DeAndre wants to go out and get 11 rebounds and three block shots and Blake want to control the glass, they'll have a chance. But I tell you, can they shooter, score enough? Yes. Exactly. I think now they can score enough. Yes. You know, we'll get the guys coming Mullins, off the bench. Chip J.J. Reddick, Dudley, 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 shooters. Well, Reddick, Reddick's going to play that Ray Allen role for Doc, which I think will really improve their offense because now you get the misdirection stuff. You start chasing Reddick around, and now you can work Slips. stuff on the weak side. And I, I agree with you, Steve. I think, I think Doc will put Blake in positions maybe to, to, to make that next step. But you know, a shooter's dream is when 
the big guy can create that double team. And this is where why he I can like kick Houston. back out. And this is why I like Houston. Uh, Who's Dom, creating the double because team? Because I, I just think that <laughs> you got a guy in Harden that you don't need to a pick. You don't need to pick and roll. You can just give him and isolate him in certain key situations. And we've seen how great a score he is. And as much as Dwight Howard is not an offensive polished player, you still have to double team him in key moments. Because if he gets the ball in certain areas, you have to either foul him or you have to double team him. And so I think that allows too much to go on for Houston, I think, fouling. Don't double you got to foul. Here you go. Foul. <laughs> we are uh, looking ahead to the 2013-2014 <laughs> season. Stick around. The, the one thing I do know is that we've got somebody here that's going to work his butt off to make sure we go in the right direction. It's the layup on the drive. I think that Brian's championship experience as both a player and a coach are going to be invaluable to our roster. Thrilled and honored to be entrusted with the opportunity to, to just add to um, what is already a terrific organization and culture. It's my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you the seasoned and steady hand that we're going to rely on to take us to championship level, Mr. Doc Rivers. Man, nearly half the league changing coaches going into this. I mean, 13 new coaches, not not new to the coaching profession, but 13 teams changing coaches going into this season. Uh, which story is the most intriguing to you, Steve? Who do you really want to see? Well, how this, how's this going to work? I think probably Jason Kidd, uh, just Brooklyn. because, you know, he's inherited this team that potentially could win a championship, but they're older. They've got a very small window, and Jason's never coached. And I think everybody here would agree Jason's got a lot of potential as a coach, just the type of player and person he is. But it's very rare for a young guy to be thrust into a role like that. Instead of growing with a, a franchise as he's kind of figuring out what he's doing, he's throwing in, been thrown into the fire right now. What's that like um, if you're going to be coached by a guy who's really a contemporary? The guy retired. Uh, he, Really, he didn't even retire. He just like went and took a coaching job. <laughs> like he didn't, he, like okay, it's never happened before. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, you say he he played against these guys last year. Well, I, I think overall you know, it's ha happened in passing. Like Bill Russell was a player coach and uh, Lenny Wilkins, Lenny Wilkins played, mm -hmm. player coach. Like that era, that was a little bit more acceptable. Uh, Avery Johnson probably would be the one I could think of that was that close. But and Avery was assistant. But he was assistant while. coach only yeah. for half a year, yeah. and then he took over the team, and they went to the NBA Finals. Or, uh, but I think I always find it interesting, and and like Neek and and, and uh, we talk about certain things that, that basketball is the only profession where your tenure as a player doesn't really count as experience, and to me, I think that's that's. Ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense because if you work for IBM in one department for 20 years mm -hmm. and they just moved you over to another department and say, oh, this guy has great experience. They're just moving you to another department. But you look at everyone looks at Jason Kidd and everyone and these guys are coming over and saying, well, they don't. This is their first. No, they've been on the job 19 years. But see, this is the thing. The first thing when you talk about player coaches, a lot of those guys who were player coaches had experience on the job as coaches. But I think they got to, what Jason Kidd is going to have to realize, he's going to have to get the respect of his players. Because, again, like Charles said, he's just coming right off the court. It's going to be how quickly he develops a relationship with that team. But, again, he's going to get experience on the job. And he's going to make a lot of mistakes. But hopefully he'll have a coaching staff who can help him through that. Some guys who probably who have been a, a, a former head coach who can kind of teach him on the job. And that's how I think he's going to, you know, what? kind of weather that storm. I think we draft for potential in this league when it comes to players. We've drafted players fresh out. You came fresh out of high school. Uh, we saw what your, your talent brought to the league uh, after a few years. Jason Kidd, I think, is in the perfect situation for that organization as a former player that's taken them there to two championship uh, rounds. Uh, in terms of, you look at the coaches in that position, point guards in this league that have become great coaches. Three years out from now, if Jason Kidd was to say, I want to start coaching, maybe there'd be a scramble to try and get him to be a part of an organization. If you're the Nets and you're looking at Jason Kidd and you know this guy wants to coach somewhere down the road, why not 
hire him on potential, surround him with the pieces they've surrounded him with in terms of, of coaches, assistant coaches that have been head coaches, and you support him through this growth period, and eventually I think you have a great coach. Yeah, but the uh, problem they got, to pick it back on what Steve Kerr said, with that old team, he going to learn in two years, at the most. Mm -hmm. I, listen, because to me, the key to the Nets is how much Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett have left in the tank. Mm -hmm. The Nets have a two-year window, in my opinion, where they could be legitimate contenders. Uh, so that's to me, it's the toughest thing for Jason. They have to win now. now. They have to win now. Uh, uh, so, and and they're not the favorite. Uh, I think they're a top four seed in the East, but they're not the favorite. Chuck, don't you so think now though that most of these organizations, and that's the pressure right now. You know, I, and I agree, it's going to be tough for them. But I'm with Rick and Kenny. You know, why not take a chance for a guy who's played 19 years, played that position? It's not natural, you know, on the job. I, I think when you, he surrounded himself with some coaches that have been there, but I think also some veterans like Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. Now, if he had a young team, yeah. I would say this probably is not going to work. But when you have a Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce to help you along with the process, a Lawrence Frank and everybody he surrounded himself, you know, I, I'm rooting for Jason. I, uh, we, I, all I, I, I think, we all want to see We all want to see Jason I think this well. can, can work because, like you said, I, I'm not expecting him to win a championship this year. Yeah. I, but you know the crazy thing not, about it, Ernie, is like there's 13 teams that thought they should have been better. Yeah, that's what's crazy to me. There, there's only really two or three jobs that I said that should have been open. Yeah. The, the, the right. rest of those teams were about what I thought they were, mm -hmm. and so to have 10 more jobs open up because you have a delusion of grandeur, thinking that you're better than you are, that is the fictitious that's going on in the NBA. That's where Denver has like, to be careful. I, I don't like, understand how Lionel Holl Holland's got fired. What, what do you think, how much better you think they, Memphis Grizzlies were going to be? Right. You think right. they were about where they were? Absolutely. I, I, I thought the too. Los Angeles Clippers, you know, and I would maybe hire Doc Rivers, but I thought the Clippers about where they are, right. you know? David Yeager takes over, too, for uh, for uh, uh, Lionel Holland's in Memphis. And the thing, too, about, about Brooklyn, you're in that market right there, too. Um, and you cannot make a hire at this point and say, have fans saying, who? You didn't do that here. You said, wow, okay, Jason Kidd's going to be our coach. We got Paul Pierce. We got Kevin Garnett. That, that's, there's a buzz created there. And, and, in that, and in that city, in that rivalry uh, in there in Brooklyn and, uh, and New York, that'll, that'll be interesting to see. Meantime, while, while Jason Kidd gets this, you know, retires and gets this job, uh, Brian Shaw. Yeah. Um, should have been had yes. a job. Yes. He's, he's had to wait and yeah. wait and wait, Tracy. What do you see in Denver? I think he's uh, he's, he's going to do well. Um, obviously, being on the field with Jackson for so many years, he's, he's gotten experience and, and, and learned from one of the, the greatest coaches of all time. Um, I thought he should have had a job years ago. Um, but congratulations to him, and you know, I wish him the best. I'm torn. I'm torn because I'm, I'm, I'm in support of Brian, and I'm excited for him. Uh, George Carl should be coaching in this league still. Um, I look at the expectation level of the Nuggets organization now, considering that they've they had a great season last year, fell short in the playoffs. But uh, it's Brian stepping into a situation where he's lost some key players. He has a uh, Danella Gallinari coming back off an injury. I hope they're not looking for a fast start because I don't think that's possible in Denver the way things are set up right now. So uh, where this is an overdue opportunity for Brian, I think he's going to have an adjustment period there that, that I hope the fans understand and not look back to George and expect uh, the same things right out of the gate. Yeah, I think he's got the hardest job of, yeah. of the 13. I really do because he's replacing a George Carl, who's done an incredible job. Uh, they won 50 plus games the last few years. I think the hardest thing in coaching is to take over a successful team. You, mm -hmm. you're, you take over a bad team, everybody's looking for change. Take over a successful team, all the players are like, "Well, why would we change what we've been doing?" So he's got a he's got a tough job on. Well, it. I, I would say that Brian has a tough job, and but I think also he he's up for it because uh, I would look at him the same way I look at Jason. They've been in basketball longer than they've been out of basketball. They, their, their life, their, their Brian must be 46. Mm -hmm. He's been in basketball 29 years. So he's been in basketball longer than he's never not been. So to me, he's ready and equipped for, for the opportunity. I think the tough, tough thing is now the Boston Celtics mm -hmm. as well with uh, Brad Stevens coming in. See, it, it hasn't been a good transition yet. We haven't seen that in a long time from college 
to pro. Can he be the first yeah. in a long time to do that? But I'm going to disagree with you a little bit because... The expectations? They, yeah, yes. they, they have no expectations. Like, he, he has... He got a shelf life. No, this is what I mean by that. Yeah. He could have a shelf life of till you get to a point, and then when they start getting good, we get a coach in here that sure. can get them but, but I'm top. saying, like, there's no expectations for the Boston Celtics. Like, on Brian, like mm -hmm. Steve said, mm -hmm. on Jason... And it, it, listen, and to go back to what you just said a few minutes ago, some of these guys, they have visions of grandeur. Mm -hmm. And like, dude, y'all not that good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why you're firing coaches who are successful, uh, and, and, but I, 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 like, I have no problem. I'm, I'm glad Jason got a job. I'm, gra I'm a Brad Stevens fan. So am I. But I think he got, <laughs> listen, he got a job for sure three or four years before there's any expectation. <laughs> hey, hey, Dominic, in Atlanta, um, speaking of no expectations. And again, again, the San, <laughs> the San Antonio coaching twin has a couple of guys leave. Brett Brown goes to Philadelphia. Mike Budenholzer goes to Atlanta. Larry Drew goes from Atlanta to Milwaukee uh, immediately. Tell me what's up in the ATL. Well, you know, you're getting a guy that coached under Pop who's got some long-term teaching and schooling under Popovich. You know, you, you look at our team, and we've lost a lot of key people. You lost Josh, Josh Smith, Zaza Pachulia, Devin Harris, Ivan Johnson, who I personally like. I think he's a tough guy. He's one of those guys that you have to have on your team. Anybody so, who gets banned from the Korean League is a tough guy. Hey, <laughs> hey I love them guys. I love that type of guy. Um, so there's a lot of changing. So it's going to it's going to really come down to see how quickly they develop some chemistry. We've gotten some key pieces. We got Millsap, who, who signed with us, this, we signed Teague back. But now you're not as big as you were last year. You have Al Horford in, in the center position. Millsap going to probably play Translation. Al Horford. Translation, <laughs> I would like to say, is, hey, this team is not very good. Hey, no, it's a no, It's work in progress. Me, like anything, when you get that many new pieces, it's yeah. going to take time. But, uh, this but, team but is not very good. I just want to get Dominique. I, I told Dominique I went to Vegas recently, and they were favored in the D League. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and, and uh, I, think, I think it was said in seven uh, games. Yeah. 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 You have no shot in with seven games. Guys, okay? <laughs> no shot. And game, yeah, look, man. And game seven's going double OT. Uh, uh, listen, the highlight factory will be. There will be highlights from the other team in there. Uh, that'd be. That'd be one. I'd be circling. Uh, man, boy. Uh, boy I can't, uh, you know what, Ernie? I'm, I'm looking forward to. You know, Kenny touched on it. The Clippers with Doc Rivers. You know. Thank you for changing the subject. Yeah. <laughs> you know, boy, you know you because it's going to be interesting because, you know, <laughs> the, the number of wins they had last year, mm -hmm. what Doc can come in and change, um, uh, the style of play. Uh, and, and I think it, the bullseye is on Blake Griffin this year. I, I think Doc's going to have to find a way to have him be a guy that can draw a double. I think in, in this league, you know, you got to have some kind of guy, whether it's off the bounce. We know Chris Paul can do that, but I don't even think Chris Paul can take you so far. Yeah. Can Blake Griffin draw a double and make other guys around him make the game easier? You I know, to what, me, it's, it's two things. Number one, I love the Byron Mullen signing. I think he's a very good, solid NBA player, and he's going to be even better with the Clippers because he's going to be playing with better players. But listen, we can say all we want to. Blake Griffin has to get better as a basketball player. Mm -hmm. And if he does not get better, if he spend all this time making Kia commercials, we... <laughs> Those are real good. Uh, they are real good. Yep, yep. I, I'm with you. There's no reason a guy who can jump like this should be averaging eight rebounds a game. He's right. got to, he's got to and physically impose his will on the game. He do, he's got to draw a double, and he's got to dominate the game down low. That's going to be the key. We can say Chris Paul's a terrific player. They got... They got better with all these guys, but the key is going to... And, and DeAndre, and DeAndre Jordan, we, let him, off the, we let him off the hook, too. You know, those two guys right there, if they have gotten better as a basketball players, uh, the Clippers would be a legit contender. We'll be back with more on Open Court right after this. We always play a little game show uh, called Who He Play For. Uh, and we... And, 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 can't Charles, be good for and me. Charles is always the subject of that. And... Um, and so we're going to do that again, but Charles, it's not just you. There you go, Ernie. More open court episodes available at the click of a mouse on NBA.com.
Welcome back to Open Court. We are wrapping up this uh, preview of the 2013-14 NBA season. And we'll have a, a little fun here because you know, if you watch us on TNT, you know that when the season begins, uh, that first week we always play a little game show uh, called Who He Played For. Uh, and we and and, and, <laughs> Charles, be good for and me. Charles is always the subject of that, and um, and so we're going to do that again. But Charles, it's not just you. There you go, Ernie. It's not well. Everybody, everybody's going to get a crack at a player. Okay. All right. Uh, Would you like to go first? Yeah. You have no. You have no. Oh my. Ernie, how do I know the season hasn't even started? How can I know? <laughs> who, uh, because there have been they moves actually been the, there have been moves in the off season. You don't read the paper. You don't have yeah. internet. No, all right. I have but, so, okay. but, but you have you have does. pretty much have a layup with your selection. Okay, all right. That so who he play for? Gustavo Ione. Come on, <laughs> Gustavo Ione. Who he play for, Charles? <laughs> That's so easy, Chuck. I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> oh, let me ask you this. Where, where are you right now? <laughs> what city are you in I'm right in now? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, good good guess. Oh, you okay, think? so you missed that. He is. He's oh, an Atlanta think Hawk. Oh, you be watching the Hawks this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go to uh, Kenny going next. <laughs> Kenny, uh, you have drawn tough assignment here. DJ Augustine. Oh, he's in the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, DJ is a good player, man. He's going to be left Indiana. Really and you're young. right. Went to the Toronto Raptors. That was easy. that was one of the quickest of all time. Oh, that was ridiculous. We gave him that easy one. Okay. He didn't know. <laughs> yeah, things things get things, get a, little, things get a little tougher here. Uh, Although Steve Kerr, being the former GM, probably knows every move that's ever been made before it's happened. Uh, Steve. Omri Caspi, who he played oh, he was. That's easy. Oh, Houston, right? Yeah. And he go to Houston? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Charles, did you know that one? The team, the team is now two Charles, out of three. Yeah. Did you know that three? one, Charles? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, man. Houston threw up some nice stuff. Okay. You didn't, Stop <laughs> changing the <laughs> subject. I'm glad you're getting <laughs> alerted to talk about to it. You talk hey, before about the guys it. go, what? Let, we could give, let give Charles even a guess. I don't think he'd get him. <laughs> oh, fine. I don't know. I don't. I think we could get a guess. Okay, here we go. Give him a guess. T Mac, you're up. And, and this is this is kind of unfair. Don't say it. Because he just mentioned this guy moments ago. I'm going to pass Chuck, that to Charles. Yeah, Go ahead, Chuck. Chuck, who do we play for? Toronto. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Jared, Jack. Go ahead. That was about four seasons ago. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. Give him the answer. <laughs> oh, he went to Cleveland? Yeah. Yeah. Cleveland. There you Man, are you kidding me, man? Okay. Oh, oh, man. The game is over. No, it's not it's over. over. No, it's not. This dude don't wow, even know wow. where Jared Jack is. Wait. Well, I want they sign him up. They got uh, Tyreek I mean, uh, Tyreek Evans. Tyreek Evans, though. What's the other point? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Back up. 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 Hey, Fox, are you ready? And, and yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Go, they got a good team. Rick Fox gets Maurice Spates. Um, you know, wait, Chuck, Chuck knows that. Oh, I just played with uh, Golden wait, State Warriors. Yeah, because he's no. just talking about a team he likes. Talking about there you go. Know that. That. All right. I knew that. Chuck, you knew that. There's one. nothing, I, I, nothing I to this. I did know that one. I'm going to. You did? Wait, what you, I got a life. I ain't been paying attention to basketball <laughs> right now. I'm, this is a, this is a, a guy tough. who was. This is a guy who was in Detroit forever and ever, and so Smitty, being a Detroit guy, should know this. Jason Maxey. Wait, 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 Tom. Chuck got knows this. No, Chuck I don't want knows this. this. Don't cheat off my papers, Smitty. Go ahead and guess. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> don't hey, cheat Chuck. off my papers. Chuck. Jason Maxey. I don't know where he went. Look, look at it. Do you know what this is? It's a letter O. Orlando? Yeah. yeah. Like, it was going to be either going to be that or Oklahoma City. Yeah. You, uh, so, <laughs> hey, you just chased me out of red. Out of, out of you red know why he went to the Magic? So he could play against the Hawks a few times. <laughs> and and <laughs> per, perhaps the toughest of, of the group uh, goes to Dominique Wilkins. Oh, he knows. Dominic knows. Oh, wow. yeah. He's, he doesn't. He gets paid all year, so he keeps up with the game. Uh, uh, Josh Harrelson. Oh, he knows. Who? Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he played for. Him. Yeah. He played for. Him. Uh, that was a good one. Who's hey, I'm like Joe. I have no idea. <laughs> on, you have man. no idea who Josh Harrelson played for? Kenny, who he played for? I got Detroit. That. No, Kenny. He's there you go. He's, he's got it. He's right. At the buzzer. He's there right. you go. So uh, I, 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 I follow oh. what goes on. I, I, my salary gets uh, through 12 months, so I work all year. <laughs> all right, whoever. I like you. Whoever can get, whoever can get this bonus question uh, will receive a wonderful uh, cash prize uh, from somebody. This guy <laughs> played in the D League. Oh, Arinze. Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks. Arinze 
<laughs> Odawaku. What team did he play in the D-League? I can tell you this. Odawaku, no. Who's he play for in the NBA? Oh, I was going to tell you. Orenze Odawaku. Orenze is not a bad play. I really like him in there. Who do you play for? <laughs> first, who, who can answer it? Oh, this is real. You want yeah, first. I'll go Cleveland because of the uniform he's wearing in the picture. No, no that was his D-League. Go Phoenix. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go yeah, I like Toronto. Phoenix. I like go Phoenix, yes. Oh. 76ers. No, I'm going to go with the Knicks. We all wrong. We all wrong. He's still in the D-League. Pelicans. Pelicans. Hey, you know, the Pelicans had a nice summer. Uh, I like Drew Holiday. I like Tyreek Evans. That's not uh, an NBA name. No. <laughs> you don't like the name change? Oh, I don't like that. Come on, man. <laughs> I forgot Pelicans. I wouldn't have said that. So, yeah, yeah that's not a good name. So that's a wrap for this edition of Open Court. Uh, I can only assume that you will do better once the season actually begins. Uh, I know all the players on the, the good air. teams. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know all the players on the good teams. I'm not yeah. watching bad teams. I never faked that. I'm not watching bad teams play early. So name three teams that you will not watch this year. <laughs> oh, you get, ready. get ready, Nick. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Where? Um, Lakers? <laughs> the Lakers. Hey. The Lakers. No, no, I was just throwing. You know, he said and the that Dallas earlier. Mavericks. You not watching the Mavericks? No. I don't want to watch. I love Dirt and the Biscuit. I'm not watching the Celtics. Asians, uh, Celtics. I like what the Celtics are doing. Really? Phoenix. Watch you watching Phoenix? Phoenix? Uh, it sounds like the show is almost. I'm not watching Phoenix. It, it, it wasn't thinking going to be on a list. I, listen, Here we are talking I'm, about hey, the East I'm again. The, That's it for this edition I'm, of Open I'm Court. I'm one of the few people. Disregard I like what, what he's saying. <laughs> so long, everybody. <laughs>